take a look at the powerful toolbar found in the project window of Nuendo 7. Our toolbar is always accessible directly above the project window and we could click on a tool to select it or you could hit the numeric keys above the QWERTY keyboard. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. The toolbar can always be accessed by right mouse clicking anywhere on your project window. I prefer to use an extended toolbar which can be turned on by default in preferences by going to editing to tools and unchecking pop-up toolbox. With this toolbox you get the tool label plus context sensitive menu functions which are handy especially working across multiple screen systems. If you wanted to go back to the mini toolbar just hold down a control key and right click and you could toggle back and forth between the two sets of toolbars. The primary tool that people use is the object selection tool and this has multiple uses. One is you can just simply move events. If you want the event to be snapping to a particular time frame, let's say if we're in bars and beats to move directly to a bar, we could enable snap here and you could turn snap on or off by hitting the letter J on your computer keyboard. So now when I snap it'll only go to the bar or if I wanted to go to a beat, I could select beat, adjust a snap like that. Or just by hitting the J key, I could turn the snap off and freely place the event where I want. Anytime I select an event here, we get five different handles. I get an upper center handle, which will allow me to adjust the clip gain. And we may notice that in the info line, we could adjust the clip gain here or directly from the info line. So either way accomplishes the same thing. If I wanted to do fades, I could do a fade in by taking my left corner handle and being able to just drag that across. If I want to double click, I could edit the fade. I could use kind of a stereotypical fade presets or if I want to make my own and store that as a preset, I could do that. My upper right hand corner will allow me to do fade outs just like easily. Same principle. My bottom handles can have different modes. We have three different modes with our sizing tool and we could toggle back and forth between these modes and you'll see that the cursor will change just by hitting the one key above your QWERTY keyboard. So our uh, normal sizing would allow us to say, okay, I don't want to have that. I don't want to hear the beginning of this event or I just want to trim the ending of that particular event. If I change it to sizing moves events, let me just get rid of some of the fades, make it a little easier to see. So I hit the one key again, we go into our secondary mode, the sizing moves contents. And this way I could say, I want the beginning of that event to fall right there. Or I need the ending of the sound effect to fall directly there. The third mode is really handy called sizing applies time stretch. So if I just simply say I need this event to start here and end there, it'll time compress or expand that file to automatically fit within that length. Now there's some alternate modes using some tool modifiers that are really handy. If I wanted to split this clip, I could hold down the Alt key and click and now that event is split. If I wanted to make copies of a particular event, if I go to the lower right hand corner, at this point I could just, you'll see that it turns into a pencil tool by holding down the alter option key and just dragging across, I can make copies just that quickly. One of my favorite functions is when we hold down the alt and shift key, this would allow us to slide the audio within the event itself. And this comes in handy if I wanted to uh, have just an, even this will work across multiple tracks. So if I could just come here, I could say, okay, let's just move this down. If I want to constrain the direction, if I start to move it down, I could hold down my command on a Mac and that way it won't shift in time. And now if I wanted to select multiple events and hold down alt plus shift, we could just simply do this. And again, we could have this automatically conform with the fade ins for each of the clips as well. So very, very simple. And again, you have your unlimited levels of undo directly on the main project window. Our second tool we'll look at is going to be the range selection tool. 
So I could select a range for processing. And then if I wanted to select a different range for different types of processing, I can now hit the two key and just simply do different processing and have range selections done directly that easily. My scissors tool, as you probably figured out, would cut parts. If I wanted to cut parts at even intervals, I could just hold down the Alt key and it'll take the distance from the left point to, the, to where the tool is selected and automatically split those events. If I wanted to glue events together individually, my glue tool will allow me to glue parts. But if I want to glue all these parts together at the same time, hold down the Alt key and glue and all the parts will be joined. If I needed to erase different events, I could do that. Or if I say I want to erase every event after this one, I could hold down the Alt key again and it will keep that event and erase every one subsequent to the right of that. Our zoom tool will allow us to zoom a particular selection. So if I want to get a better look at this or if I just want to get a better look at this, we could actually go directly down to the sample level and then if I want, I could just double click in a blank spot on my desktop and I could have my undo history for Zoom. My mute tool will mute events. So when you see it turn gray, it's not going to sound as we play it back. Our next tool will be our comp tool. And this is really handy if we've done multiple passes of a recording, we could open up lanes. So we'll look at our different lanes here. So let's say these were different performances, different voiceover takes. What our comp tool will allow us to do is we could see our main take here and we could click right here to open up our lane view. So once, if I wanted to select different parts from different takes, I could just hold down my left mouse button and select my range just that easily. If I wanted to listen to the different events, I could hold down my command key and I could listen to different takes. Or if I wanted to actually split, I could just hold down my alt key and click right there and say, okay, I wanted the end of that. And as we select these, you can see that these get kind of promoted up to the particular track here, our master track. So if I wanted this one, we could see that, and if I now we could just make seamless comps with the comping tool. Our next tool that we'll look at is for really well uh, is a great tool for aligning our our different audio to a grid. So if I wanted to make a musical score based on kind of the audio, what we could do is use the time warp tool, and we notice that as soon as this tool is activated, our timeline here turns brown. So once we activate this tool, what I'm able to do is say measure 50 starts right here on that event. And I want measure 51 to be here. Measure 52 should some start right at that downbeat. And you could actually adjust. And what it's doing is inserting different tempo changes to automatically align the grid to the actual file. So fantastic tool for that. Our drawing tool allows many different functions as well. So one is to just simply have volume changes on a clip. And again, this is before the signal actually hits the mixer. So if you wanted to kind of uh, regulate some dynamics so you don't have to use a special compressor for that, you could just simply do that. It also allows for simple automation drawing. So if I wanted to open up the automation lane by clicking here, we could just now draw in our own automation. The next tool is gonna to be kind of a specialized drawing tool, which has different shapes. So if I wanted to do just a straight fade out, we could have a straight line tool. Or if I wanted to draw in a parabola, we could do that. Uh, if I wanted to draw in, let's say like a triangle wave, I can now just come here. And one of the handy things is you could hold down the shift key and change the frequency. Or if you wanted to invert, you could just simply move the cursor up here. So if I like that frequency, I can now just draw that in. So you could do that same functionality directly with line tools or with your parabola tool, sine wave, triangle wave. 
to listen to an event, we could actually just click right here and we have a play tool. So if I wanted to choose this to, to be the play tool, I could just play and audition the event at different times. But we could also alternate this to be a scrub tool. So if you're trying to find a particular point for an edit, and let's say we've zoomed in here a little bit. Very easy. And the last tool that we'll have is going to be set up for doing different colors. So if I wanted a particular range to be colorized, I could actually just come here and change the color of events. Or if I wanted to have a different color just in the middle here, we could just kind of select different colors right there. So as you can see, just very quickly from right mouse clicking or accessing your tools, you have a tremendous amount of control and flexibility with the tools on the main project window in Nuendo 7.